Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to be taking a look at a whole load of Lightwave Smart Series switches. I've previously looked into these and I have already adopted some of these into my smart home setup. But today I'm going to be finishing off and upgrading all the switches that I haven't yet upgraded along with replacing some of the old Connect Series switches by Lightwave. So let's dive in and take a look. So, um, in no particular order, let's have a look here. So, one thing I do find with Lightwave, products are amazing, and I'm not just saying that they are, but the, I do find the boxes a little bit uh, understated. Literally, typical unboxing here. Here we go, straight out of the box. Get the switch. At least it's all cardboard, that's, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, instruction manual, useful information, apparently. Let's keep that out of the way. So, all of their smart switches, they come with this 10mm standoff, um, which is really helpful if you've got a really shallow back box or the wiring behind doesn't allow you to fit this right up against the wall. If you can, it looks great, um, but actually they look really good even with the standoff, so that's provided. So, this is a two gang uh, smart switch. What's lovely is you've got the live and neutral terminals on the back. Um, you do not need to have the neutral on the back, um, along with the switch live um, uh, for each, each side. So there's no need to uh, jump the live across to the other switch. Uh, you have one live and neutral in, and then you're switched live out. Ultimately, you would need to connect your neutrals up if you're using uh, neutrals. If you've just got the switch, uh, the live and switch live um, from uh, the light fitting and the power is actually at the light fitting itself, um, you do not need to use the neutral. You'd have your live going in and your switch live going out of the respective switch. So that's really nice. I like that one. It also includes two screws. The heads of them are really small. When using the screwless face plates, they don't stand out too far and cause issues when you're trying to clip that back on. So what do we have here? This is a, another smart dimmer. Oh, shock horror, another, another leaflet. Same applies, more cardboard, a couple of screws. Couple of screws, single gang. Live and neutral in, switch line out, and the standoff that goes behind it. The spacer, wonderful. Let's flick through all of these. Another smart dimmer, two gang. Here we go, let's take a look at this. Oh, that's small, that's really small. However, I'm not convinced I'm solving the shape. Anything that comes in here, got a battery and oh okay i do like that so you can fix this to a ceiling so that's a nice little touch so you put the screw through there that just sit on the ceiling or a wall because that's just a little magnet in there clips on that would allow you to change the angle um, to some degree i'd be interested to see what the field of view of this is let's have a look here and just see if there's anything for installation support see that Okay, I don't think I've taken anything out of that one. So there's no useful information as the other switches have. Um, comes with the battery, um, really helpful. Actually, it looks like a nice big battery, CR2477. So that's useful for that. Let's see what else we've got here. Another single dimmer, one gang dimmer, another two gang dimmer. It's got really dark in here. The sun's just got in and killed all of the light. I haven't got any studio lights, so um, bear with me when it comes to the quality of that. So this is a, uh, I've only got one of these. These are quite expensive. Um, I believe it's about 170, 100, yeah, around 170 pounds for a three gang smart dimmer. They are expensive. But the amount of features that are packed into these, it's well worth the money. Great to have and uh, well worth the investment if you're looking to upgrade to Lightwave. It links up with HomeKit, um, obviously other things. Oh, interesting. I've forgotten about this one. I hadn't looked at the box then. So this is their wire-free wireless smart switch. I like that, two gang. Thank you very much. 
They did actually send me this wireless switch and the motion sensor free of charge. Yeah, thank you for that. I'm sure I'll find a use for that one way or another. But it's great for things like in the bathrooms, uh, wet rooms, uh, anything like that, where you can't have a regular light switch. These uh, wireless switches are great for it to put on the wall where they are within uh, the electrical zones. And because they're only battery, they're really, really safe. How they hold up against water, that'd be something to find out. But at least you know you're not going to electrocute yourself through mains wiring, which is great. Even give you some more plugs and a couple more screws. Okay, that is it. So I've got two single gang dimmers, three two gang dimmers, three gang dimmer, a two gang wireless switch, animation sensor. So let's have a look at fitting these. Okay, if you are comfortable doing this sort of thing, you know what you're doing, great. Um, for those that don't, do make sure you get an electrician in to uh, assist you with this. Um, particularly when it comes to lighting as well, um, you can sometimes have a lot more cables uh, behind the light switch than, than you would um, expect. And you might not necessarily know what they each one of them do, um, particularly if it's an older installation where it's using older colors, different colors. Yeah, it's not worth the risk. At the end of the day, your safety is important. So what I have got here is that I've got a the live at the switch. So I've got two neutrals, two earths. These have got the common here. That is the live coming in. All of this has been isolated and tested. Now I've got the switch live coming out. With this, because I've got the option of putting the neutral in here, that's what I'm going to do. Just one of the minor little bugbears that I have with these is that these terminals are very small and I need a smaller screwdriver. Um, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I've got a couple of some really small screwdrivers which fit perfectly now. So I've got my live, which uh, goes into the live port. And what I'm gonna just see with this is if I can't get both neutrals into the neutral terminal. This is 1.5 mil cable and these terminals are particularly small. So let's see if I can get both of those into the neutral terminal of the switch. It looks as though it will go. So let's make sure that's nice and tight. It's really hot uh, to talk to you guys. Why did I do that? There we go. At least the tug test, steady. Make sure that the cable isn't loose. It's uh, during the terminal. And that's that. So I've put two gang here. I took off two gang. I've only got this connected to one light. However, the second switch, because it's got the live and neutral going into the back of the switch, I can allocate that to another smart option, whether it be through HomeKit or the LightWave app connecting it to another device. So for instance, down the garden where I've got power, but might not have any lighting cables, I can install a relay and pair it to the second side of the switch, which is one of the great features of LightWave. Saves on running lots of extra cables when you don't need to. Because this back box is quite deep, I'm actually going to offer this up to the wall. In this sense, I'm not going to use the spacer. Let's see how this goes. I've got the two machine screws here. This, oh, I'm not looking what these thinking. Are they gonna be long enough? That one is. Okay, I've got another one here. Okay, let's try again with this. I'm going to offer up that one. So there's a nice bit of plastic wrapper across the front of the switch to protect it. I think it's uh, nice to do that until you've completed the install. You certainly when you're handling uh, screwdrivers around it and whatever else, you really don't want to be scratching that front cover. It doesn't scratch easily though. I've never had an issue. It's just nice to make sure that that's all protected until uh, it's actually fully installed. That's it. And there we go, clipped on, looking nice and neat. So this is one of the old Connect series light switches. The look is very similar. Um, they haven't really changed too much from the start. But as for the functionality, it's time to get a new switch on here that works better 
not only with LED variants of lights, but works better with automations. Not that this didn't work, but this definitely can be improved. And this is why behind here, I've had to jump the power across to the other side of the switch um, with the new style of switches, having the live and neutral input terminals means that you no longer have to jump across which uh, makes it much more user friendly. A lot easier to install for anyone that's comfortable to do this, but doesn't do this day in, day out. So there we go. So I've taken a moment just to redo what's previously been done behind this switch. Maybe uh, I was uh, short of five-way Wagos at the time, but feeling that may have been the case. Now I've had some more. It's only time to just remove those, the unnecessary need for so many where it goes behind this switch. So let's uh, get this wired in. Neutrals all together. I'll jump one neutral from here to the back of the switch. Here's one I prepared earlier. So that connects into that. Put my earths together. These are double insulated switches. So they do not need an earth. And they haven't provided an earth either. So all your earth terminals get connected in the back box. If you need to, just run another cable to connect up the back box. Let's finish this off. For the same look across the whole property, you could go and put the spacers in regardless. Um, there's nothing wrong with installing the spacers. However, just in the different rooms, as I go around, if I can get away without putting the spacer in, I certainly will. Hit the like button. If you're new, please subscribe. Job done.